Welcome to Corrective Consciousness, episode 140, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. I'm your host, Vice the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Rockologist. So for this week, um, we wanted to make a generalized topic for a lot of the games coming out this uh, in the next um, few months, uh, in the near future, because I, I there just have been this has been a really great year for gaming so far. It's been r- unusually good uh, for uh. in only the last three months. So. I mean, we, we've had Resident Evil. I mean, that that's a big deal. We had Spider-Man just before that. I mean, there's there's been a lot of good stuff. I mean, uh, there, there's there's good there's a lot of good are, stuff going on. Good stuff are coming. We just have to keep alive and have enough money to get to, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's for sure. Um, I mean, I I recently just picked up some some uh some games here um i i got 428 shibuya Scr- scramble uh on uh lotus's uh suggestion here but uh that that's by no means a new game uh, even even in, in the u.s i how how long has it been out maybe about six months would you say uh maybe yeah, a few months maybe a little mm-hmm. less than that but um uh it it was originally a wii game wasn't it yeah, the game's actually like ten years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I did pick up uh, Detective Pikachu um, based off of the uh, the trailer that I saw for the new movie uh, during uh, my viewing of Captain Marvel. So I, I, I thought that was uh, it, it, the movie won me over. Let's say uh, I, I'm not a I'm not a Pokemon fan in the slightest. I do like some of the spinoff games. Like um, I like Pokemon Pinball a lot because I like pinball. Um, I do want to watch the movie. But I, I, I want to see that movie. It looks hilarious. And uh, I'm a Ryan Reynolds fan. So, um, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I'm picking up the game mostly because it's, you know, I like detective stuff. I always have. Um, and, you know, this is a light detective game, obviously. You know, it's for, for, for kids mostly. But I also wanted to pick up, a you know, a, a one of the final 3DS games, you know, while while it's still around. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there's, um, a lot of, uh, cool stuff coming out. Um, uh, today is actually the release of, uh, Sekiro. Um, we're recording this on Monday night. Uh, so, so we're, we're a little bit, uh, behind here, but, um, I am really looking forward to that game. Uh, I'm going to wait for reviews to come out before I buy it because, uh, it seems to be, um, something a little bit different than what they were trying, uh, you know, with the, with the Dark Souls games, so uh, this is the new release from From Software. Obvi- um, you know, uh, more specifically, so I, I, I can I can convey that. But um, I mean, I have plenty of games to play uh, in you know from this company before I get to this. But I, I may just skip them and 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 move on to this since they don't. It doesn't have any story connections or anything. You know what I mean? Unless yeah, and I mean, meanwhile, I'm doing the opposite. I'm working on the FromSoft games uh, <laughs> very slowly but surely. Like, like I've played Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. I will play Bloodborne. And the latest game I've been playing, actually, is the original Kingsfield, which I think is from Software's very first game. It's 25 years old now. Uh, you should and, um, move on to uh, Jumping Flash after that. Um... Not interested. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with, like, the Souls <laughs> style sort of not not gameplay style but like attitude style RPG of the games game. they have yeah so like um i'm actually getting toward the end of kingsfield as well i've unlocked the final floor all i need to do now is just level up sufficiently until i'm capable of a technique that i need to and, use and to you're playing the, final boss. the original original right you're playing the japanese original right now the japanese original yeah so the true kingsfield one because america's kingsfield one is japan's kingsfield two so um what have you thought about the game are you are you annoyed by its archaic nature or uh, are, are you well, actually I, enjoyed I, it enjoying it I might have been annoyed, except that I've already played Eternal Ring, which is the same controls, just it's on the PS2. And there aren't so many death pitfalls. They do exist, but Eternal Ring spawns you, like, right next to one. So you're like, are you, are you kidding me? Um, the game is more claustrophobic. There's... The strange thing is Eternal Ring didn't have a map, but its level design wasn't really that complicated. Uh... Kingsfield, the level design is way more complicated because everything looks the same. It's all hallways, but you can find a map. The thing is, though, 
the map is incomplete because it's like some guy made a map. So the first floor is pretty comprehensive, but the map gets less relevant with each floor you get to. And when you get to floor four, it only has like a couple of rooms. And depending on how you got to floor four, you might not even be in those rooms when oh, you start. Wow. You're just like, it shows you where your location is, but it's just in this big blank space on the map. And you're like, uh... <clears throat> Not fun. <laughs> now, the good news is you can find a superior map, which actually covers everything except for secret areas. But you got to find it. And if you came in the wrong way on a floor four, then it's like, well, have fun. If you came in the right way, it's pretty much in the room ahead of you. But if you came in the way I came in, you got to navigate a bunch of labyrinthine tunnels. So I was just using a, a fan map online, which was quite accurate and has been showing where items are. So I'm getting to where I'm getting to. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but... um. Yeah, are you aware that From Software has like moonlight weapons in a lot of its games? Yes. Like the, yeah. the best weapon is the moonlight something. Yes. Like I've heard it even carries over into Armored Core, like a moonlight gun or something for your mech. Mm -hmm. Demon Souls had the moonlight spear, and Dark Souls one and two had the moonlight sword. Yeah, you get it so, from uh, Seath's uh, Seath's tail, right? Yeah, if you cut off Seath's tail, which is an optional thing. Uh, the boss fight's not optional, but cutting off his tail is actually pretty hard to do. If you cut off Seath's tail, then you could turn his soul into the Moonlight Blade, which is uh, a, like a, a heavy sword, but its damage scales with intelligence and not strength. So if you're a wizard, then you yeah, can actually I, use the sword and deal damage. I foregoed the, um, um, you know, uh, doing that with that that because like I, I didn't have any intelligence in that game because I, I played as a, a pyromancer. So yeah. And Dark Souls 2 has bosses that if you beat them on New Game Plus versions, then they'll drop an additional soul that you wouldn't have gotten the first time you beat them. And four bosses each have a soul that is a callback to a Dark Souls 1 boss. So the one that drops the callback to Seath soul, uh, you can make the Moonlight Blade out of that. And the Moonlight Sword in Kingsfield... I don't know about the Kingsfield sequels, but in the original Kingsfield, it looks just like the Moonlight Sword from Dark Souls 1 and 2. I thought that was kind of cool. That is cool. Um, you but, know, Locals, uh, tell me. Is Kingsfield better than lo the, the Bones of the Ancestors? Just a little bit, yeah. In that <laughs> you can actually play the goddamn game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did, did want to mention about Sekiro that is it... Isn't it unfortunate a little bit for Neo 2 to come in the, come out in the same time? Yeah. It is what it is, though. Yeah. But wait, what advice were you going to say? I, I'm just looking really forward to Sekiro because it, it uh, I'm, I'm watching the videos here and it, it just looks so much like a more nimble type of game than what yeah, we're used yeah, to. Maybe. Even more so than Bloodborne, which is a pretty nimble game to begin with. There's no blocking, really, in that game. So, um, well, there there is, but it, it, yeah, but there is, but there there isn't. Yeah, get get, get good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you can have a what, a, a, a wooden shield in that game, but um, yeah, like the plank shield is freaking garbage. But yeah, the, in this, um, like you have a grappling hook, yeah. and you you're you're zipping all around it. It almost looks more like a Ninja Gaiden game uh, than or, than a if from you, software anyone game. Remember the what was that game called? There was that old PS1, PS2 game series about... Rising DJing Zon. That, what? Rising Zon. No. Uh, what Tenchu. is it called? Oh, Tenchu. Tenchu. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rising Zan is like God Hand before God Hand. Uh, so, so, yeah. Um, uh, t the From Software made a few of the later Tenchu games. They didn't make the original two, which people are mostly fans of. From made the... Um, the third and fourth game, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, from from's a weird company, uh, and they always have been. Um, it's kind of funny to see them with money. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because like I always kind of like them, but also knew like if I saw their name on a game, I knew it was going to be weird, but not good, <laughs> and. Nowadays, I could see what they were getting at, but back then, I thought their games were just garbage. And they're not garbage, they're just weird. 
Um, they just yeah, that's the thing. Like Kingsfields, I'm getting used to playing it, and I can play it just fine. But like a lot of gamers would be just like, they they would get fed up in like five minutes with the archaic control style. But I see what they're going for, and it's got like, the attitude that From Software has in a lot of their games. Like the Kingsfield has like the dead or dying world with monsters and your moonlight blade and everything. They're, they're the themes... souls continue that. Even Lost Kingdoms has the Demon Souls beginning, where it's like, fog came in and now there's monsters. Their, their themes are undeniably cool and uh, iconic. Mm. I mean, they they really know how to, like, um, build an atmosphere. Uh, and they I'm always have. Echo Knight as well, I'm they always have. To mix, like, mech gameplay with uh, Dark Souls. Like, you're controlling a large, something like a, a mad cat from Mac Warrior, but it's all rusty and clanky, and you have to manage what your what your spars like energy and energy distribution in mid combat. That, that would be cool, like a like a dead future world instead of a dead medieval times world. Yeah, that would be cool, like um maybe a fall of uh, uh you know like a fa- a fall of uh. Um, you know, technology kind of like, you know, yeah. that that kind of thing, maybe... Almost maybe like Hyper Light Drifter, kind of, mm-hmm. where you've gone back to medieval style, but you see, like, decayed ruins of, like, giant, Tech, like, you. kaiju mechs, and you're like, what happened? Yeah, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. even, um, what, J- Journey to the East, uh, or Enslaved, um, Enslaved is kind of like that, too. Yeah, it's based on Journey to the West. Uh, yeah, Journey to the West, yeah. I still gotta play Enslaved, actually. Yeah, that game's Speaking really journey. cool, I, I've never beaten it, but, um, I, I played a good portion of it, and the beginning is one of the coolest beginnings of any game I've ever played. It really, Speaking of really cool. Journey of the West, by the way, did you guys know that the, the new ge- Steam on the a new game came out called, I don't know what, Rowdy Heroes or something among those lines came out hmm, and it's no. it's a journey of the west game like okay actually a sort of uh based on the the journey of the west story like sure. you have the monkey king and the sun yeah son goku the best yeah, goku. the best the best journey to the west game obviously is that japanese only ps1 game with the people in the costumes <laughs> What was that called again? Oh, uh, With, like, I like the butt rock. Uh, I forget what it's called, but I know what you mean. Uh, game's hilarious. <laughs> Mister, you fucking beat it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to look the, uh, look up that name, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I know what I'm you mean. Looking for the game. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. PS One. <laughs> Oh god, what is this called? It's just, uh, it's just like mocap people in suits. Yeah, I, I forget know. what it's called. I know it's on Hardcore Gaming 101, but I don't remember what it was called at all. Yeah, it's a fighting but, oh, game. Well. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny though. I, 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 Mr. Ryu played this for us, and it was, it was classic. That it was. <laughs> that it was. Yeah, I, I, I forget what it was called. Um, there, there's like several uh, Sayuki, uh, games. Uh, one called Sayuki for the PS1. Uh, there's there's Monkey Hero. Jeez, like there's like a whole bunch of games that were. Oh, there it is, Magic Beast Warriors. Yeah, that, I was gonna say it had Beast in the title, but I keep getting get confused with Beast or um. Uh, yeah, Battle Monsters. Battle Monsters. Yeah. I was thinking about. I was like, War God? No, no, no. War that's God. midway. Yeah. <laughs> Break out the N64. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 4 before Mortal Kombat 4. Bio Freaks. I mean, um. <laughs> <laughs> Bio freaks, Jesus Christ! All the bad midway games from that era. <laughs> Jeez, uh, Mace. Remember Mace? Oh, Unruly the only heroes. thing I ever remember about Found Mace it. was that pretty cool cover with like not Lord Zed from Power Rangers <laughs> on it. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is great. And 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 Dracologist, you said you had a few games that you wanted to talk about that are on the yes the for the... of being released. Uh, first example, hold on, let me uh, put it into Skype. Well, while you look that up, I, I, I do have another one that I want to oh. talk about. Uh, oh. they're remaking... well, uh, well, before before you get to it, by the way, I just want to point out, I found the title Magic Beast Warriors quickly by googling Hardcore Gaming 101 Fighting Butt Rock, and it came <laughs> right the fuck up. Because I remember he said Butt Rock in the article, it came right up. It's like Butt the fourth entry on the list. Yeah, yeah, you were, you were right, Dracologist, on Ruly Heroes. Uh, yeah, look at this. But, um, yeah, what I was gonna say was, um, 
Um, uh, there are two that I'm looking forward to. Um, wow, th this is a puzzle platformer. It looks pretty fun, actually. This it's a multiplayer puzzle platformer. Well, you can basically, as a single player, you can play all the characters, but then you can swap in between. It's like a little bit like, a, what's it, what was that called? Lost Vikings. Yeah, Just a little bit. You know what? It, 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 oh, or, or Trine. Trine was another one of those um, kind of things. Which was also like Lost Vikings. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 this looks pretty neat. It looks like the, the similar graphics to the Rayman games, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the recent Rayman games. I was just going to say, oh, oh, yeah, Rayman 2, got it. No. P picture it perfectly. No. Uh, no. Origins <laughs> and, and then the one after that, uh, whatever that was called. Um, but, uh, yeah, those games are great. But anyway. Um, Wanted to I, mention? What's that? Wanted to mention something, guys? Uh, I wanted to mention that there are two remakes that I wanted to talk about. Uh, looks like somebody is remaking Quake. Which I think is a really cool endeavor, the original Quake. Uh, you mean Quake 1.5? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. It, it's a mod. It's a mod, but boy, I'm missing that I don't have my Quake anymore. Yeah, I, I <laughs> because think, I actually uh, have the mod. I think uh, John Romero actually officially like um, gave him an attaboy, the guy who made this. Like, nice, um, nice. Which is really cool. It's like, like basically brutal doom, only it's Quake. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, uh, yeah, T John Romero is really cool about certain things, and he he, he endorses a lot of um, you know fan involvement. So it's really cool that he was like, you know what, keep at it, kid. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But uh, the big thing that I thought was really neat is uh, somebody is uh, is make remaking an Unreal Engine, the original Dark Forces, which I'm really excited about. Oh damn! I heard about that. Because yeah, the original oh. original Dark Forces, like it, it, it looks like an old game well, if you play it today. It oh, uses sure. I mean, sort there's, of. There's, there's a there's a fan engine out there just cut like Z Doom hmm. or whatever. Um, but uh, this this is. It uses uh, the build engine, isn't it? It, I, I it feels like it feels like a Duke Nukem style game. I think it's a modified engine engine of its own creation. Hmm. I, I think uh, Lucas Arts made their own. Uh, I don't think they they licensed an engine because I, I think they okay. they also made uh, Outlaws, um, hmm. which I, I think it and Outlaws are on the same engine. Hmm. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. I do know that Dark Forces was like. The legend Kai Katan, the Jedi with the guns. Yeah, but you, you didn't become a Jedi until the second one, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dark Forces 2 yeah, but gave you the you lightsaber. Also... First person lightsaber. He also was a, such a badass, he's named after Akaishi Dragons. Yeah, Kyle Katarin. Yeah. Yeah, Katarin, he was a cool but... character when... See, see, people don't understand why this was important, but... Back when we played like Dark Forces and we loved things like uh, like like Shadows of the Empire, uh, like Dash Rendar, it was because we didn't yeah. have any Star Wars movies at this time. Like this was before the prequels yeah. were out. So like the only like Star Wars like things you could hear and and look at and see were, the were stuff video from before games. We were born. Yeah, we're we're, we're 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 stuff from way before we were born. And and video games that were coming out currently, you had like e even a game like that was stories. as mediocre as uh, as uh, as Rebel Assault and Rebel Assault Two um, was kind of a treat because you could hear of Darth Vader in it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like you get your Star Wars fix somehow because it's not going to be the movies like until until way later when we were in like high school. So when we were in like elementary middle school. Like, yeah, I watched the original trilogy on VHS, but, like, the latest movie in that trilogy was from, like, what, like, 82 or 83 or something? Mm -hmm. So, like, it was, again, before we were born. So, it was like, hey, do you want new Star Wars stuff? So, you had, like, the Super Nintendo games. You had, like you said, Shadows of the Empire, which was, like, that game put, like, every, every single Star Wars game ever made after fucking Shadows like does the ATAT -AT harpoon and tow mm -hmm. cable thing shadows of the empire like invented it <laughs> yeah well like, i was gonna say it was kind of in the super mechanic. nintendo game but like shadows of the empire did it like for real like in 3d and it felt so cool when you got it to work yeah absolutely I, 
I do want to say that after Dark, like the Dark Forces remake, I actually saw a uh, Star Wars Pod Racer remake also with Unreal Engine. Which was oh a yeah, that good is act. that's a cool idea, and that's a good that's, game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I actually my friend actually gifted me on Steam, and it's actually working very nicely. I yeah, don't remember. It's a lot being better now ugly. that you could play it like um, dual stick style. I mean, the original release was on N64, and it. It, you, in order to play dual stick, you needed to use two, two controllers. Um, mm. But like, wow, uh, wow. <laughs> I do have you like keyboard and grab mouse. them like this. <laughs> so I don't need controllers. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's cool that um, you know you could use a dual, a modern dual stick controller in order to play those games, which is pretty neat. Uh, what were what were the games coming out that you wanted to talk about? Uh, there is a couple of like for Vice, one Vi one one gift for Vice and one gift for Lotus. Like for Vice, the Devil Engine I think is coming out. Well, what or is it? it one more time for me. Devil Engine, it's a shoot 'em up. Ooh. Oh, okay. And for Lotus, it's going to come out soon. The Sinking City, which is a Lovecraftian game. Yeah, so oh, hey. Devil Probably. Engine is something I've been really looking forward to for a long time. I, I actually know uh, a little bit about it. It probably has the best looking um sprites in a shmup that i've seen in a long time the these are um like you know pixel based right yes so yeah it, it's a beautiful looking game um it releases it it, it, it it's already released on steam right i don't know what uh, this game has already been released on steam yeah yeah, but it, it, I think it is coming out on uh, Switch, so I, I am looking forward to that. Okay, mm -hmm. hey, so, and, and the free demo is available on in this team, so if you have anything wants to want to try that, you can try it freely. Yeah, uh, the, the, you know, going back to the Sinking City, the funny thing is, even though I love Lovecraft stuff, I've never played any Lovecraft game ever except for Dark uh, Corners of the Earth. Uh, and that was recent. Like, you'd think and, I played more, and I just really... Uh, so, what about Eternal Darkness and Amnesia Dark Descent? Well, that's... Well, okay. To, uh, those are, those are like... In the, Spin up. Okay. I, th those aren't official Lovecraft, but yes, they are very, very obviously inspired by him. So, I, I guess I'll take it. Yeah, this looks uh, like Dagon. I will say, though, This looks like Dagon, I, I, uh, the Sinking City. Yeah, well, the Sinking City, yeah. like, Rila, maybe it's Cthulhu. Although, uh, I will say, though, I'm very into uh, Arkham Horror and Mansions of Madness, the board games. But those a bunch of times, and those are it's, Lovecraft stuff. Uh, Sinking City I, looks like more like is it, if Eli Noir was infected with Cthulhu. So I'll take it. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, the, it, it looks great. Um, I'm taking a look at. Um, I'm taking and a look at this. To, like identify the murder weapon. Oh, it was supposed to be an acute angle, but it acted as if it were obtuse. It, that explains. It, it. turned out it was man. <laughs> uh, what is anyway, this non-Euclidean geometry? <laughs> it looks better than the Call of Tulu game that came out recently. That was the recent one I heard was like all right. Like it uh... was very on action. Like there is not so little to do in it. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was like the in a tweet someone tweeted out, namely GGG Man lives. Tweeted out that boy, is it good to be a boomer today? And he did a bunch of new sort of old school first person shooter games are coming out, including games like Remake of Blood, Iron Maiden. Oh, and... a remake of Blood? Oh, that's yes. pretty sweet. Yeah, that's freaking ridiculous. Like, Blood is one of those games where it's like, hey, remember Blood? And like, maybe. Yeah. But it was a pretty cool game. That, but that was people made remember, build engine. People that was like, definitely no, a build engine game, remember right? It. And there are, I see Fruit ga Games that I, I managed to... I, I seen two trailers of it. I seen the trailer of Void Bastards and... Uh, what was it? Proteus. Not Proteus, Proteus. Proteus, and, yeah. And uh, the last one was Vrat Eon of Ruin. Uh, so Proteus was the... I think was the weakest of the all. It looked like sort of the... It kind of like... Half Quake, half Doom style of fast combat, like you see, style. Uh, it was uh, well. You have to look into it. Honestly, I really don't know what I. I didn't see anything that grabbed me. To be honest, I'm sorry to say. But if you like 
your sort of doom style shooters it is possibly yeah, really you know what it looks a lot like uh like <laughs> a, like brutal doom it looks like brutal doom yeah very but much. it uses models yeah uh, void the, busters was have you seen uh, proteus uh lotus no nope. yeah you should take a look at this just like look at at the art in, in this Mm. Yeah, it, it it's pretty it's pretty amazing the way it looks. I don't know. Anyway, so Voidbusters looks like a sort of roguelike game where you have to control a, a bunch of inmates through space and you have to loot uh, space stations through sort of this way of like rem rem reminiscence of the game uh Heat signature and system shock. I don't know. Uh, you guys know system shock, but I don't of know. course, you know? yeah, I don't and know heat, heat signature. Heat signature was like a combination of uh, Hotline Miami and uh, what was that other game? The developers made uh, Gunpoint. Sort of this plan, get into trouble, plan your way out of trouble. Use very interesting weapon you know, weapons to get to get out of trouble. Okay, and uh, this looks like like you have you this you gear up, you enter into a space station, you try to pick up as much stuff as you can, you fight clever with other than with aggression, and try to escape and try to get to the escape point. Nice. And the first, last game which I actually found uh, on eleven minutes gameplay was Wrath, Wrath Eon of Ruin. Which looks like a sort of a more quake-like style, of both in graph, lots of this old-school graphic style with sort of this gothic horror. Oh, nice! Style. Like one of the like they introduced a couple of weapons. You have the sawn of shotgun. You had the sort of this arm blade, which had this char like you could swing it and had this charge up ability. Interestingly, that you you could actually use the charge up ability to jump across gaps, like because it was oh, like oh, so like you like lunge forward when you yes, use like it, in, so it, it gives you horizontal actual distance. Yes, it's like what well, Devil May Cry, like the stinger from Devil May Cry, but that, that forward charge attack a little bit, and oh, it goes through enemies. I gotcha. like, okay, and it goes through the enemies like butter. Now, and is this like, well, is there a jump button, or is it like Doom where that is your jump? You just go No, no, fast. that is a jump button. It's, it's a f full uh, 3D but, game. But you could still jump and, like, thrust forward then? Pass it. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Hmm. And it, did not, it, it has a nice grizzly decoration, and it had a nice... I think the two thing I didn't like that what I saw, that it's using the safe, same function, save system of Daikatana, that you have to pick up tokens and you consume them to create save points. That means okay. big Japanese sword. No, that means big <laughs> Japanese dive sword. No, uh, actually, means, somebody, um, uh, speaking of recent releases in John Romero... It means large katana. Uh, and, yeah, somebody patched Dai but, Katana. <laughs> That's and it terrible. means, uh, and it means you're going to be John Romero, Piat. Yeah, no, J John Romero actually endorsed that too, uh, which well, is from what, sweet. from what I've heard of about Daikatana is like if the game like worked, it actually would have been pretty cool. Well, apparently the most of the flack that the game gets is because of the N64 port, which is well, yeah, butchered. That's, that's because that's the like more accessible version of the game at the time. But apparently the PC version's pretty okay. Yeah, um, I yeah. would like to try it, but I've heard it's kind of prone to crashing or something. Well, the the mm. patch helps with that. Um, is is that is a patch? Yeah, I, I was just telling you about it. Um, uh, somebody released a new uh, uh, new patch, and uh, John Romero Fuck endorsed yeah. it. Um, Fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me see if I can pull up the the thing on that but it, it apparently he, out of nowhere this guy released like basically what amounts to an official patch you know like a, a, an official fan patch but still and uh um let's see here if i can take a look at it in news stories but yeah uh, let's see here i don't know but anyway uh it's pretty cool that there was a release for it. 
Yeah, so again, like the other thing I didn't like in Eon that the uh, one of the weapons is a sort of this imitates the nail gun from Quake One, the like this double welding, and the alt fire didn't seem to be doing anything extra. Just like it double fires half as fast but double the amount. Like that doesn't do anything really spectacular. But mm. okay, maybe there will be maybe we they try to improve on that. Again, I'm a little bit spoiled by Painkiller, where the sh starting shotgun you get is a shotgun and a f gun and a f like ice gun. The weapons in Painkiller are freaking ridiculous. Yeah, I love like, that steak gun. That steak gun's awesome. Yeah. Even the basic weapon, like that, doesn't consume ammo. Is yes, like tons of fun. Like it has four four functions. So there's four ways you can kill with it. Yeah. You're oh, going to yeah. have to defeat me, John Romero. Mm. <laughs> Already did, I'm so did happy it, but... the Doom 2016 callback to that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, John Romero is a cool guy. I think it, it used to be fun to make, make fun of him, like, back in the day. But he seems like a, a pretty cool dude these days. But he, he doesn't speak backwards, though. <laughs> no, that would be the icon of mm. sin. Uh, <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah. So it he, this, he said this uh, three days ago um, on the on March the fifteenth. Thank you to um, Frank Sapone and his mod team for doing such a great job of bringing Dyke Katana up to a very playable level with the one uh, version one point three patch. Here's a video. Nice. Yeah, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I, should I pick plug uh, Ion Maiden, or I talked about it before? Um, I don't think you have talked about that game. Uh, Ion Maiden is a prequel for the game Bombshell. If Iron remember, Maiden, uh, excellent. Not <laughs> without the uh, Iron Maiden without the R. It's Ion. Yeah, Ion. Iron Maiden, excellent. No, no, no. I just don't want to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a good... F like, uh, recently we had been a couple of updates, so weapons are now a little bit more fun. For example, the 3 barrels revolver is like... has this ability that you can... In, like in Red Dead Redemption, that you can tag 3 per person and just let the let the auto-aim do the headshot for you. Oh, nice. Like, like the, what is that called in Red Dead Redemption? Like the dead aim or something? Or dead something, aim? something, some, something, something, bullet time, bullet time. Yeah. And I think I'm only angry at the shotgun for being a little bit slow. And like, you press 3, you select the shotgun. You press 7, you select the grenade round for the shotgun. You press all fires, you change between the all, the shotgun rounds and the grenade launcher. You press 3, you get... Three, two times you change between the shotguns, and okay, guys, we get it. You really like the shotgun changing thing. Yeah. <laughs> but no, seriously, like, put, a, put in a new weapon in the slot seven. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it looks like a fun game. Like, I had good times with it. Okay. If you like sort of this build, and upgrade and build engine that Duke Nukem used, then this is something you might want to look into. Absolutely. Well, uh, we, we should probably move on pretty soon here. We, we, we do have weekly stuff to get to, but uh, uh, did you want to say any final words, guys, on our subjects um, here? I, I think I'm good for now. How about you, Drake? I'll just... Uh, give me Wrath of Elon demo. <laughs> okay. Or what was it called? Oh, the Aeon, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wrath Eons of Mizzy, uh Ruin. There we go. Yeah, yeah, Alright, well, uh, we, sh we should move on uh, to our weekly items. Um, uh, unfortunately for Vise's uh, weigh-in, I, I, I didn't... Uh, I forgot to weigh myself this morning, but uh, I will be back next week. Um, me and my girlfriend are, are, are going to the gym this week, so uh, I, I expect some results. Um, but uh, let's move on to... Um, uh, our, our fan reactions here. Lotus, could you take sure. it away, please? Yeah, for the first one is actually uh, from Dracologist, who's right here. Uh, one of them was just a, a correction for me on Warcraft 1, where I said you needed roads for um, the buildings. Well, where I mean, we go, where we're going, we don't need roads. Lotus. Yeah, thank God. I mean, like, well, Dracologist said, well, it's not really a correction. Like, you don't, it's true that you needed the roads of the buildings, but also, 
This is something I completely forgot about. You couldn't just right-click on an enemy unit with a fighter and tell them to attack, right? Because that was the, I'm used to Warcraft 2, where you click on a, a friend or like a bunch of them, and then you right-click where you want them to go, and if you want them to attack an enemy, you right-click the enemy. No, you have to select the attack command, then click on the enemy. And in like fast-paced RTS, that's kind of annoying. Um, but in Warcraft 2, if you right-clicked on an enemy, the computer would be like, well, what what could possibly be the only thing you would want us to do? And it just attacks. But in Warcraft 1, that wouldn't necessarily happen. They might just walk up to them or something and then defend if attacked. So you have to click the attack button first. It's a pain in the ass. That, that was not, um, that's not even an offense function in the strategy games. Hmm. And, Dracologist, this is what I'd actually like you to explain regarding an item that's, like, too good. You said, like, the, the Crater of Might in Hexen, you said it refills both mana bars to max. It's and you find it quite a few times, even if there are ammo up plenty. So, like, that's, like, too good to use? Would it, like, you just kind of want to hold on to them because they're cool? Uh, it's basically, it replenishes all ammo to the maximum at, the, uh, at a single drop of a button. So you can that's basically, ridiculous. once you have... <laughs> When, when you have, like, the last, one of the last weapons in Hexen, which is, like, you know, that are pretty powerful, you can just mm -hmm. belt out a bunch of rounds, reload with the Crater of Might, and just unleash again. That's amazing. <laughs> Alright, so uh, another comment here we have from Anthony Cooper. So he says, um... Regarding Resident Evil 2, he says, To me, uh, Lotus and Vice, you will like this game a lot, but I should say you could put this game in its own thing, not with the original. Like, yeah, like, don't think that this is Resident Evil 2 with a different camera. It, like, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's a different a game like Remake was. Completely different game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's saying, now I'm biased when it comes to Resident Evil, although, like, 5 was too arcade for me. 6 was like, what? 7 uh, is better, except for where it got repetitive to the middle and end game-ish, but... The remake uh, is a much improved game. And then General Ledger says, re regarding Captain Marvel Shazam, he says, One other thing I liked about Shazam slash Billy Batson is that the source of his power comes from adherence to the seven heavenly virtues. Yeah, Shazam was... Um, also, wasn't the name Shazam like an acronym for various gods? Correct. You're right. Mm -hmm. He says, The more virtuous Billy is, the more powerful he is. But that's actually pretty clever. So, like, you're not going to have, like, an evil Superman like so many stories do. Because if Billy Batson tried that, it would end badly for him just by nature of his powers. So he says, this is why Luthor had to use mind control worms on him in Kingdom Come. When I first read Kingdom Come, seeing Billy as Luthor's lapdog was the most horrifying thing I had seen in comics. And it's still up there. Yeah, I had yeah. forgotten that he was mind controlled in that. Um, I, I, But that that's even more terrifying. Just, like, not... Not knowing, not having any any control of your own body, and just like well, well, not only that, but even from the opponents, like this is not an ideological thing. You can't reason with a mind control guy. Yeah, and and like, that sucks. Not only that, but Morning like su an anime. Oh, oh, Spider, no. uh, Superman has to fight one of his friends, knowing full well that he has to hurt him, uh, and he yeah. has no control over it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, terrifying. Ugh. Yeah, now, re regarding the fan question, it's General Ledger again. Do you have any favorite speeches or monologues? And this is not exclusive to video games or anything. Video games don't even often have crazy speeches anyway. <laughs> they sometimes do. I got the perfect like, one. In general. So, uh, I'm a big fan of Stanley Spadowski's uh, theme. <laughs> The, the speech or, or that speech. was parodying an actual speech from a different movie. <laughs> I'm mad, mad as hell. And I'm... This floor is dirty as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm referring to uh, Michael Richards' speech in uh, UHF, uh, the, the Weird Al movie. <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> but uh, we, we also referenced a, a, a uh, funny one last time about... Uh, uh, in Billy Madison as well. <laughs> yeah, may God have mercy on your soul. Um, I, I rather like, there are a few I like, although two of them are actually from villains. Uh, the Major's big speech at the end of, wow, the fourth Helsing movie? When it like the 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 I love war speech. Oh yeah, it's, that's a it's good messed speech. up, but it's really well done. Uh, and also Ragio Kiruin's uh, speech about clothing in general from uh, Kill La Kill. That was also a really like 
it, it kind of it really just locks your attention. You're just like, oh damn, like this is this is a big deal. Um, regarding a more passionate like good guy speech, it's it's a corny movie, but I, I really like Bill Pullman as the president's uh, yeah. speech. This is our uh, Independence, in Day. Independence Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will not go quietly into the night. And then you realize he was uh, Lone Star on Spaceballs. And you're like, oh, I, they were doing it for a shitload of money. <laughs> Call me you idiot, not me, you, Captain. You know what I mean. But, uh, yeah, you know I, I, mean. I love that. I, I say it so often, but it it's still one of the best. Funny. She doesn't look Druish. <laughs> oh, a Druish a princess. Her <laughs> own what we no, need. original nose. <laughs> but uh i i also really love um uh uh rorschach's uh uh exclamation when he's in jail is one of my like favorite well that's not a speech or a monologue even though it was a kick-ass well, he, line he does have a a really good monologue in in the um or, well, the opening in the earlier or earlier in the movie i was gonna bring that up say. too uh basically saying you know people are gonna ask him for help and he's gonna say no um, yeah fuck you oh, yeah like i will whisper no yeah that is such a good line i mean but the line the line in the prison by the way was so fucking good like because like some prisoner was gonna attempt to start something with him and he just scalds the motherfucker's face <laughs> and as he's getting taken away by the uh the uh the guards he uh, shouts out at the prisoners, like, one thing you need to understand is that I'm not locked in here with you. Like, you're locked in with me. Like, I, I saw the movie in the theaters, yeah. and, like, we the saw audience it together. actually, like, apl- yeah, the audience actually, like, applauded the yeah. line. Like, it was it was so damn good. Yeah, we saw it on an IMAX th- screen, too. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I, that movie is not perfect. Uh, I'm not going to say it is the best, um, you know, thing ever but i still really really like it um i think i love the movie i i, I think um it, it has some uh, a couple issues uh, that hallelujah scene is stupid but um well actually the main issue i have i think is that all of the i i know they're not called the watchmen but i'm gonna call them sure. that because well, i don't know what you call them all the watchmen seem to have like super strength and fight scenes yeah I was, that like, was my just, other criticism like the whole point of the series is that they're not like it's so it's like a not funny kick ass. The whole point is that they're just guys Random who put on people. costumes yeah. just beat the shit out of people. Yeah, I mean the mm. the the big point is the only person with actual superpowers is John. Um, yeah, and he's giving less and less of a shit about humanity because he's transcending humanity. Yeah, so uh, mm. I I I love uh, I I love certain parts of that movie. So I'm 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 a big fan <clears throat> of it. And uh, but by the by the way, I, I gotta say one of the most not scary but like a chilling in a different way like it just the line really stuck with me is you know how dr manhattan can like make copies of himself yeah yeah there's there's one part where he's talking to i forgot who he was talking to it might have even been the silk specter and she was like what well, john I, I thought you were on mars and he's like i am on mars <laughs> I'm like oh my god <laughs> that was amazing i i, I also I, I also really really like when they go to rescue uh, Rorschach from the jail, and uh, he finally catches up to you know the the guy that's been kind of like trying to kill him, and he just he oh, goes into the yeah. room into the bath bed uh, into the bathroom, and you you see the door flip back and forth and just blood everywhere after it flips back once. It's just like Ooh, well yeah because like you see happened? the guy backing away well yeah you see the guy backing away slowly Rorschach follows him in the bathroom. Then you can't see anything. The door shuts completely. You hear a toilet flush. You hear no violence. You hear a toilet flush. And blood pours out from under the door. And Rorschach comes back out. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, such a, uh, maybe some, he some smashed really the guy's scenes. head into the cistern. Some really good scenes in that in that movie. But anyway, um, any any uh, any big monologues or, or speeches you, you like, Drakeologist? Um... I do actually have one. There is the Tamanigru top scene with Arkham in Devil May Cry 3. Uh, that oh, it's is, been a while. That is a really good scene. Awesome. Uh, what else is there? 
Oh, um, actually, well, th- there is one. I actually I haven't even seen the movie, but I feel that this is low hanging fruit. There's Charlie Chaplin's big soapbox speech uh, from the Dictator. The Dictator yeah. That's like one of the most classic, like fictitious, like like in fiction, yeah. uh, big speeches. Sure. And obviously, there are many real, like not by like not by characters, but by like people, people not in movies or whatever speeches. There's obviously Martin Luther King Jr.'s "I Have a Dream" uh, speech. Classic. There are various presidential inauguration speeches, um, various things like that. Um, I've just been focusing on fiction so far. Yeah, mm. I mean it, it, it's tough to pick out. Um, we will fight because, on the like, beaches. I mean, like, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you could say the Gettysburg Address too. I mean, uh, I was actually going to say the Gettysburg Address just because of how shockingly short it was. They're like, here comes a presidential speech, and it's like, like ten minutes. How about um, less than that? Uh, Henry Harrison's speech that got him killed. How about that one? I actually don't think I know this one. Oh, well, it's not the speech itself that's famous. It's the fact that he stood out in the rain to make it and then died in 30 days. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, I, I was thinking he was assassinated or something. No, but, no, oof. no. He, 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 he was president for 30 days. and during the, Yeah, that's right. It was him. Who took over? Uh, I don't know. Was it Grover Cleveland? I probably have this wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, by, oh, by the way, speaking of presidential speeches that, like, I mean, well, this one got him killed, but one of my favorites, this isn't even about the speech. I don't even remember what he was speaking about, but Teddy Roosevelt was giving a speech outside, and some guy shot him, and he just finished the fucking speech. (laughs) It was like, oh, damn, (laughs) what a freaking badass. Yeah, William Henry Harrison, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, but Teddy Roosevelt just tanks a bullet. I think he had something in his pocket or whatever that protected him. Yeah, it was a fold and, up uh, speech. Um, yeah, and like I mean, he still took damage, had to be hospitalized, and I think that won't live with him for the rest of his life. But like, he just fucking kept going. <laughs> like, that's, that's unreal. Teddy Roosevelt was a beast. He was. Like I think his wife said after he died, because he died in his sleep. He said like, that's the only way death could take him was in his sleep, because otherwise he put up a fight. <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, bully. Uh, well, was it? The, 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 yeah. the thing about him is he he was he believed he had a lot of beliefs and he was like very adamant about about yeah. them. He was he was very admirable in some ways. Some ways not. I mean, um, he, was, yeah. he was definitely an imperialist. product of his time. He was definitely an imperialist. Um, you know, for for better or for worse. I mean, he 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 would he basically went down to um. um uh, you know, um, Panama and and <laughs> stole people's land and built a canal there. So I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, one of those things. <laughs> yeah, like you do. Yeah. One of those things. Going to Panama and building a canal Yeesh. and stealing land. Yeesh. Got yellow fever and all that. <laughs> but anyway, Oof. um, all right. Well, uh, do, if anybody um, else has anybody anything to say, we we should do it for the good of the order. Yeah, monologues or speeches. I mean, there are a bunch of really cool just Shakespeare I, monologues. How about dialogue? You know, that... Like wanted to say, wanted to say, like Hoji's monologue cut from the Shadow Warrior remake cutscene was very interesting. Oh, yeah, I haven't played that. That's fun. Hmm. <clears throat> I think I have it actually. I just haven't played it. All right. Do it. Well, let, yeah, let's right. wrap up that show. Uh, this is the show for this week. Uh, we want to th- thank uh, all of our fans who contributed questions. Um, General Ledger uh, has thrown down the glove and and given us four more questions. Um, yeah, and just in time, too, because the one we answered today was our very last uh, fan question up to that point. And also his. So um, Yeah, so he's just knocking them out, man. Yeah, please give us some more. Uh, you know, I, I, I thank you very much, General, uh, for uh, supplying us with, with, uh, with the topics here. We, we definitely want um, more from everybody else as well. So um, please do not be the only person here. Uh, give us some variety. But I'm glad that you, you supplied us with some good ones and, and a non- non-gaming one at that. Uh, so that was pretty yeah. cool. Uh, please keep us supplied with awesome topics via the YouTube, uh, 
by submitting questions of your own on the YouTube and SoundCloud pages. Ah, boy, I'm tired. While there, please give us thumbs up, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. Helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps Lotus sleep at night. Finally, you can catch us on Tuesday on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the in depth look at this week in our lives. And you can find me as Vise the Bold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, Twitter, Switch, and Battle.net. Lies and slander. I sleep just fine. I, I mean, you can <laughs> follow me ways. on my YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you, you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to let's play, like The Suffering, which I'm doing right now, or get involved in discussions with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at Patreon.com/slash. Lotus Prince. And you can find me on Steam, on Skype, and on Discord at Lair of the Crocos World and Castle Satorman at the same with the same name. Okay, great. Well we will catch everybody on Tuesday for another episode of Reactive and hopefully uh, one that's a little a lot lighter, I hope. Until next time, everyone. Good evening.